Hello, everyone, and welcome to my podcast, Stacy Personally Speaking, where my thoughts become known. This is season one, episode 178 of the Journey 365 series. Today's episode is about camping at last, the grill life. It's raining and the police. My body was awake at its usual time after 5 o'clock, but my mind had been alert from much earlier. Sleeping on my sides had become painful throughout the night because of the sand and river stones surface. This caused me to keep changing sides from the time I became aware of the pain. I finally got up at almost 7.30 as I had become increasingly conscious of getting warm. The sun had risen in the direction where my head had been laid. I did all I could to cool down while remaining in the tent, like taking the pink tam off my head. The night had not been cold as I had prepared for at all. I decided to start my devotion before exiting the tent, even though I wished I could rest some more. The book of Isaiah gives a stark reminder that God does things for His glory. His mercies that are extended to us are for His glory. We should not forget this. For my name's sake will I defer mine anger, and for my praise will I refrain for thee, that I cut thee not off. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. For mine own sake, even for mine own sake, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. Isaiah verse 48, Isaiah chapter 48 verses 9 to 11 of the King James Version. This morning, I went in and out of my tent over 10 times. This was quite an ordeal for me as the entryway is not like a door. On top of that, I was constantly trying to close the mesh flap to ensure no insects went in, even though up to that point, I hadn't experienced any. I'm not going to say camping is for me, but it's also early in the game, so I'm not going to rule it out either. But all I felt was tired since I had gotten up until mid-afternoon. No doubt because I had gone to bed late and had not gotten a good night's rest. I felt miserable, honestly. And I was moving back and forth like mad ants. I had gone back and forth because everything inside my tent was pretty much needed outside. But I had been trying to avoid taking everything out again since I'd have to bring them back into the tent that night. My friends, on the other hand, had a huge plastic box, probably a 50 liters or so, which could be tightly locked and kept outside in the elements. Everything for cooking was in it. And then they had two others, one for frozen foods and the other for cool foods. So they didn't have the back and forth ordeal as I did. Then again, this wasn't their first camping trip, so no doubt they had overcome their own challenges. While we were setting up a small table and umbrella to prepare breakfast, a group which was deduced to be Brazilian, largely because of the tattoos and loud voices, along with the many tanned skin tones, were also setting up. They had come early in the morning and were setting up. We thought they were setting up an overnight tent. At least I did. But they actually put up a huge tent with an extended shade tarpaulin to the front. When my friends saw that, they remembered there was a similar huge tent in the vehicle. So at minutes to 10 in the morning, I went with my friend's husband to collect it. But little did I know that what we had collected was a cot, 
like a bed a cot and its covering i guess we didn't find out until we had returned from the seven minute walk to the campsite it was a beautiful walk though alongside the river where the vehicle had been parked when we realized what had happened my friend went the next time to the vehicle with her husband and they returned shortly with a huge sun tent it required all of us to set it up and i had to chip in some extra strength and tactics to get it locked into place at that time they met tired first on the agenda after all that exertion was breakfast i had bought a camping stove for myself and so i tried to affix the gas can of gas and get it going it took a long time to figure out that the can needed to be pushed all the way up and then a stone or other support placed behind it just in case not even my friends knew that <laughs> always learning boy i tell you while cooking i get some bun up there mm. why well the cheap thin bacon i bought kept popping no matter how long the fire was no matter how low the fire was turned down or how much i tried to keep my distance social distance the defrosted plantains on the other hand fried really well my friend's husband made coffee for us beforehand now i started to feel like i was camping but then i needed to get something else from the tent I was not a happy camper, as my friend told me to just bring everything out. I shared the plantains that I'd cooked with them and they shared their very meaty, almost strange to my taste bud sausage. The, sausages were, the sausage wasn't single, but was a huge coil, which they cut into smaller pieces. I didn't, take, I didn't think of taking a picture at the time though. I sat down on my borrowed three-legged stool and had bacon, plantain, bread, and some of my friend's scrambled eggs, which I scooped from her plate. I told my friend about the heat I'd experienced in my tent, wondering if I was the only one. But upon examination of their tent, I observed that it had ventilation at three different mesh areas. They didn't have a second covering like my tent did. What I didn't understand about my tent was that the second covering could actually be removed to allow more air in. I actually didn't need to sleep with the second covering on the tent, but I didn't know that. So I did that in the morning. I took off the second covering, but I didn't really need to at that time since I wasn't staying in the tent. I continued to move about with great uncertainty and a bit of frustration which became evident to my friend. I didn't think camping was supposed to be so tiring. I thought it was going to be relaxing and serene. My vision of camping on TV was of groups of families, groups or families playing games and singing around a campfire. Something with more structure and direction. You know I like structure. I started to feel like the odd one out, the third wheel. I had my sudoku, sudoku, and tons of things I could do by myself in my tent. But I can do those things at home. Anyway, my mind kept going. Seeing my plight and hear my complaints, my friend forced me to try and relax and unwind. Hmm... That helped me to settle down a bit, but my mind was still going and my eyes were seeing every possible thing that needed to be addressed. My friend poured me a glass of red wine. I make up my face, you see. My face grimaced at the taste. And after several sips, I asked what it was supposed to do because I didn't feel anything. My friend's husband made a fire using coals and some sort of gel in a small square grill they had recently bought. All these fancy things for camping, I tell you. <laughs> Roasting marshmallows turned out to be the most fun for me. 
along with enjoying the natural scene the natural beauty i felt i had brought too much food for cooking and too many snacks i also had canned foods which didn't look like they were going to be had at all my friend said camping was about eating and she was right it seemed as though there was always some fire going or thought of what food to eat next it got a bit much for me until i told myself that i didn't have to follow suit i was still full from breakfast and lunch later on we roasted marshmallows again they were so sweet yet we had so many <laughs> bad very bad i know this time i introduced some plain crackers to try with the sweet marshmallow delight they barely helped to temper the sweetness though but the crunchy contrast was welcomed it was after four o'clock in the afternoon and so you can imagine dinner should be right around the corner with rain set to come i decided to put what wasn't being used back inside my tent i wanted to try out my new mini pot and the little campfire that looked like a candle and so i decided to make a vegetable soup or a stew this was perfect as it had gotten chilly by that time i started making dinner after six o'clock i added some chicken skewers in foil paper to the grill that had been going to the fire right then i cut up all the ingredients for the stew and made sure the cover was nicely fitted before lighting the small candle-like flame that flame lasted for about 20 minutes and fortunately the vegetables had been cut really small and I had made sure not to lift the lid to check on it throughout the whole process. It was a pretty impressive experience. After dinner, we actually decided to have more marshmallows. I was stuffed. Oh boy. It was a good thing I had brought in most, if not all of my bags from earlier because the rain came down on us at around eight o'clock and while we weren't unaware of its coming we hadn't prepared our tents accordingly i ran into my tent at first and waited until the rain eased up a bit we moved quickly afterwards well my friend was moving much faster and i was observing her and then following what she did I threw my extra tarpaulin over the top of my tent and used some firm cord that I had brought to secure the four corners of my tent. The four corners of the tarpaulin on the tent through the eyelets to stones on the ground. The rain wasn't falling, falling, but it was starting to drizzle as we continued working. I did some extra work on the tarpaulin to ensure that it was not creating any funnels that would run down the sides of my tent like waterfall, you know? After working outside, I had to go inside. I had to go inside my tent to waterproof my many bags since they were all on the tent floor and they were all made from cloth. <laughs> the work seemed endless, no lie. I had brought the cot from outside into my tent, hoping that it would provide a much better night's rest. It was quite an elaborate setup and took me lots more time to rearrange the room again. <laughs> All I wanted to do by this point, though, was stay in my tent and sleep. But my friends actually wanted to play games under the big tent outside and i'm always up for playing games they started playing games while i was in the tent fixing up the place like it was my apartment i could hear them trying to teach each other new games and trying to remember the rules of the card games as they both clearly had not played card games in a while they were laughing and sounding like they were having a great time and that really warmed my heart I finally joined them under the big tent and played a few quick rounds of card games. This didn't last very long however and I'm not sure why. 
but we went right on to playing backgammon. My friend watched while her husband and I concentrated on the game. Really concentrated, right? I had my back turned to where we had entered the river area from the day before. And so when my friend said the police, I was trying to figure out if she was joking or not. She had a view of the roadway and could see the flashing lights apparently from the distance and had observed that the police vehicle had stopped. I still wasn't sure if she was serious or not until she said one is coming this way. There were apparently two of them. My heart seemed to stop beating and I seemed to stop breathing when I realized that my friend was being serious. My back was still turned until the police came and greeted us. Oof. The police had been called by the neighbors who had reported a disturbance. The police that came to our tent was very nice though. And he spoke mostly Japanese, but he spoke a little English. We, however, could understand everything he said and responded accordingly. He asked if we were sleeping at the location, meaning at the river, and what time we'd be going to bed. He also asked what countries we were from, but never asked for our residence cards, which was unusually standard, which was usually standard for most police officers. At the time when he'd come, we were playing a heated game of backgammon. But we weren't noisy at all, in my opinion. There was another large group to the left side, which was also visited by another police officer. But what, from what I could hear, they weren't particularly noisy either. Anyway, that group, that other group, had come from earlier in the evening, just before the rain. They moved like experts and set up their tents very quickly and had a roaring fire going in no time. Clearly not their first rodeo. After a while, some more persons joined that big group. Their tent was huge and so was their fire. It looked like a really vibrant camping experience that they were quite used to. It was a few minutes after 10 o'clock when the police had come. In Japan, noise levels are restricted by 10 in residential areas. You know, I had prayed a special prayer earlier this morning and God had granted us favor. You see, when we arrived at the location on Friday night, there were barriers and signs indicating no one should be there. I was quite concerned by this but by early this Saturday morning there were at least three other groups that had joined us they did not however pitch tents to stay overnight anyway the police seemed a little ap apologetic as he said goodbye because it was evident to him that there was nothing of a disturbing nature taking place we were all so relieved especially me once the game ended, we made our way to our tents at minutes to 11 that night. And then the rain started again. It felt like I had gotten the full length and breadth of a, camp, of a camping baptism by fire. Thank you for joining with me today. Please support me by leaving a comment below or sharing this with someone who you think might enjoy the journey, this camping journey. Have you been camping before? Wow. Remember to follow me at stacypersonallyspeaking.wordpress.com to get posts directly in your inbox. And of course, tune in next time to see me right here on this channel. Bye for now. Stay safe and God bless you.